There are over 5 million accounts on Faceit right now. I Meaning if there's a massive player base that's active or has played Faceit one time or another. I have a lot of data to talk about today in this video, so let's get to it. After I posted my last video where I said this. It's so inflated, you Elo is an EU, bro. Teammates are so bad. An HLTV thread was made about this video talking about ELO inflation in general. Most people outside of Europe, including myself, believe that EU was quote unquote inflated in the traditional sense. For example, maybe a 3000 ELO player in EU is equivalent to a 2500 ELO player in NA or a 2000 ELO Australian player. And since there's really no way of knowing without putting them all against each other, how would you ever really know except for looking at data? It's important to admit when you're wrong and change your viewpoint on something. So I found a way to abuse, I mean, responsibly inspect Faceit's front-end API to read the ELOs for every single player on the site. I'm not going to say that I scraped the data, but I scraped the data. Before I talk about anything else though, here's a quick word from our sponsor. If you want a safe and secure way to cash out your skins in under five minutes, head on over to sellyourskins.com. Sellyourskins.com has over 150,000 users who have used the site already. All you have to do is click the sell tab, select your skins, and use my promo code BIRD for a 5% bonus on your skins. That's B-I-R-D bird. No shady cash traders or middlemen, just a few clicks and you're cashed out to any of the methods you see here. Head on over to sellyourskins.com and use my code BIRD for a 5% bonus on all of your skins. Thank you to Sell Your Skins for sponsoring this video. So here we have a giant CSV file of every player on Faceit as of a few days ago when I took this snapshot. As you can see, EU has about 4.3 million players, while NA sits at about 310,000, Southeast Asia at 326,000, South America at 180,000, and Oceania at 42,000. Since I'm a vibe coder, I used AI to write a Python script that graphs this data for me. And we can see that all of the graphs fall into a very nice bell curve pattern, which almost looks suspiciously nice. I believe that this is the outcome of algorithmic matchmaking and algorithmic ELO distribution when you win or lose a game. Because have you ever wondered why some games you just get plus 15, plus 15, plus 15, and then you lose 30? Well, I think this is why. Faceit seems to want to keep people in this exact elo curve pattern for whatever reason and i think it's to prevent actual elo inflation take this game i just played for example i'm three queued in a normal stakes game so if the elos were even it should be plus or minus 25 elo for each team but since my team is rated higher than the other team we should be gaining less for winning while the other team loses less as well it makes sense but if we actually look at the outcomes of the game my entire team won 20 elo each while the other team lost 22 elo each meaning 10 total elo was directly removed from the pool for this match and i believe that this is what face it does to remove elo to maintain the curve that I was showing. And it's really why this bell curve looks so perfect besides the spikes. And I'm going to talk about the spikes later, and it's really funny as to why they actually exist. Side note, when I say the word ELO, I mean ELO in the way that everyone understands it, but the correct term should be matchmaking rank or MMR. And not to sound too much like the Polar Express kid in this video, but raw ELO is meant for one-on-one -on -one chess games, and FaZe does not use this exact system. More on this later. Let me back up here for a second and talk about the word inflation. Just like in real life, people don't understand this term. Ask anyone on the street what inflation means, and they'll tell you that it's when the price of something goes up in the store. You know what country the Panama Canal is in? No. If you had to guess, like what do you think it sounds like it's in? Guess a country. Europe. Yes. This is not true in the semantic sense of the word, as this effect occurring is a second order effect of monetary inflation or monetary debasement. They're the same thing. If we had a fictional tribe that used seashells to trade and they only had a hundred of them, there'd be no inflation of the money because there's only a hundred seashells and they just go between everybody. But if someone finds more seashells and they don't tell anybody and they just start spending them, suddenly there's more money floating around in the system, which leads to a higher demand for goods with no supply change, which in turn leads producers and traders and everybody in the economy to raise their prices because they just have to at this point because there's more money. The pie has changed its division between everybody even though there's no more goods and services. There's just more money. When we talk about ELO inflation, however, there's a similar but unseen effect that's happening. For example, let's say we have a skill distribution and an ELO distribution. What we want from our system is for the skill and ELO to be perfectly aligned with each other, which would be pretty simple if the player base never gained or lost players, right? Because if somebody gets better than somebody else, they're just going to take their ELO and they're going to move up the thing. It's going to be easy. But if we have somebody new join the platform at any given moment for the first time, there's no telling where on this skill graph they're actually going to fall. They could actually be as skilled as a boiled potato, or they could be the second coming of Kyosuke with 200 hours. Now, I'm just going to say there seems to be an influx of the second kind of player recently, and I really wonder why that is. So let's take the more impactful example and assume someone joins the platform who really should be 400 ELO, 
but gets placed at 1,000 ELO. This person loads into their first match and just loses. This means that the people on the other team who won the ELO from this game are now technically overrated themselves to a degree that isn't zero, something above zero, meaning that they are in turn a toned down version of the overrated newbie who they just beat. Now, when those players face opponents at the same ELO and they lose, they've now donated more ELO up the ladder as well. This trickles up the ELO ladder, leading to a bell curve that eventually zeroes back to a stasis point. But since these new players have literally added more ELO into the pool, the area under the graph has to grow. And you can think of this as putting a drop into a cup of water. It spreads evenly with all of the other water and it all raises up together. And if you drip enough water over time, the cup's gonna spill over. So in turn, this obviously leads to larger ELO pools. This means that it's possible to have people in balanced games at high ELOs. What you can say at this point is that the pool of ELO is more liquid when you have a larger player base. And since EU has the largest pool of players, you can fight up the ladder pretty fairly going up and down between these high ranks compared to these other places. This is in contrast to smaller regions where there just isn't that much ELO to go around. So if you wanna get up into the same ELO that people from larger player bases can do, you have to actually claw your way through the depths of hell over everyone else rather than just simply moving up and down like what happens towards the middle of the distribution. FaZe had actually realized this problem with new players joining at 1000 ELO and sending the ladder higher and higher with every passing day. So they implemented an ELO reset system a good while ago at this point. But this only affects very high ELO players and it seemingly is to prevent people from getting invited to FPL or earn prizes by gaming the system and staying in the top 10 forever. This actually happened for an ex-pro player named BTK. I'm, I'm blind, I'm blind. I'm smoked off. I can't see, I can see. I don't see them, I see him i'm behind them don't shoot shoot flash don't flash me sometimes when i play people i don't hear none of this thing sometimes it's just it's like i'm in the library who got to 6,000 elo and quit the game and never played again but since every game he was playing was unbalanced he was able to gain 10 elo per game because face it was bugged at the time they didn't realize that you could do this so he was number one for years and years and years until they reset all the elos also face it has begun implementing your premier rank for new players to properly place them in higher or lower elo with prior info as in the same way that it doesn't make sense to put somebody with the skill of a 400 elo player into a thousand elo lobby it doesn't make sense to put somebody who should be a 1900 elo player in a thousand ELO lobby. This is in turn going to lead to less problems for new players, which is a good change in my opinion. Before Face it told Leadify that it would cost a quarter million dollars a year to use their API for their website, they used to show Face it levels in their data library alongside matchmaking players so that you could see fundamental skill differences between the platforms and what the ranks actually meant cross platform. 1000 ELO is between the cutoffs for level 4 and level 5. You can see here if I go on archive.org and look at it, you're going to land right around here in Premiere. You can see that this might be a problem as this zone, according to Leadify, using raw skill metrics is right around the average player, which is fine if the average player joins the platform, but not everyone is the average player. You can actually see from our live player data that 1000 ELO is right almost at the mode of the graph. Now to talk about the real data, there are a few anomalies that I'm going to point out. First, we can see that there's a giant spike at 1000 ELO when people make their accounts. These are either players who haven't played a game or won one game and lost one game. When you make an account, I've seen people who lose 60 ELO in one game, but typically it's plus 50 and minus 50. But this isn't the highest spike on the graph. The highest spike for every region occurs at 950 ELO, which which means these are all players who lost a single game and quit the platform. Isn't that just hilarious to see in the data? I think it's so funny. You can also see people going on win-loss streaks on the other peaks. There's a peak at 900, 850, and so on. There are also a lot of people at 100 ELO, but not as many as you think. 100 ELO is the lowest ELO you can possibly be on face it. And there are way more level 10 players than 100 ELO players in every region. So hats off to you if you can make it down to 100 ELO because it's rarer than being level 10 by a long shot. There's also a weird bump out here at 2000 ELO. And at first, I thought this was due to ELO resets not going below 2000, but then I realized that this bump exists on top of the normal ELO curve. You can see it resume if we draw a line from the existing data. This bump is literally all a bunch of ladder anxiety players sitting at level 10 claiming that they're quote good at the game by being level 10. I hate to tell you guys, but a lot of people see 2000 ELO players as barely consisting as human beings and everyone from 2.8k to 3500 is still bad. And I guess the only good people at the game are in the top 50, but they call each other bad too. Welcome to Face It, where everyone's friendly and loves each other. What's also interesting is to zoom in on the data and look at the top 10,000 for each region. To no one's shock, EU's top 10,000 is much higher than the rest, while Southeast Asia and NA match up almost identically due to their very close player base count. We can unsurprisingly see South America and OCE lag behind due to their lower player counts. What's also interesting is to take the player count of NA and divide it by the EU player count to get a scaling ratio of players to see if graphs are equivalent across regions. And to my surprise, they literally match up almost identically 
identically. It's kind of scary. This is most definitely because of algorithmic matchmaking and face it just soft ELO resetting all the time because there's no explanation for this being the case without that being true. You can see even if you do this to the EU player count, there's still a lot of players filling in the gaps of NA, so to speak. But this is to be expected as the NA player count has noise since we didn't alter it at all. And the EU scaled player count is smooth. So it's, you just expect that when you do this. But this was an unexpected result for me. And it's what made me rethink the concept of ELO inflation as you think of it. I really wonder if it's really that big of an unsolved problem. I think that it's just an inevitability of EU having a much larger player base and the ELO pool just being more liquid as you go up and up. And this is only really a problem for people in high ELO. I don't think it means anything to anybody outside of very high ELO faces. I think that if you're level eight in NA, Southeast Asia or EU, it's the same thing. And also the existence of these peaks at level 10 across all regions makes me think that these players at 2000 ELO are all really one in the same because there's only two explanations for these peaks to exist. One, everyone has ladder anxiety or two, face it purposefully makes people level 10 so that they don't quit their platform. I hope that you learned something new from this video. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Also face it, I'm sorry for doing what I did to your API. Please do not ban me for website abuse. Thank you.